Hi, beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yay, Juliet. Yay. I'm so happy to see you. Can you see okay? Yeah, I can see you. That's okay, good. Cool. I'm going to turn off the volume because my volume doesn't seem to be up all the way. Okay, there. I want to know who did your makeup. It's stunning. Oh, I did my makeup today. You oh, look my good. goodness. Really quickly today. Gorgeous. Thank you. I need to, I need to learn. I, I, and actually, I had Bobby Brown on last week, and I was using her makeup, and I was so nervous because I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm talking to Bobby Brown, and I didn't know makeup. You at least yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, good. So I'm so happy you're here. I'm sort of adjusting my camera a little bit. Can you hear me okay? Or can you turn your volume up on your phone? Here, I'm going to move this. Let's try and... Is the volume better? Is it better here? Yes. I do it? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it for sure is. Okay, yay! I'm so happy you're here. Thank you so much. I Thank love you for having the book. Oh yes. my god. Okay, yeah, it's the book, and we've got Gizmo. Hi, Gizmo. Gizmo is a very good representation of love and loving without reason. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I'm so, funny. so he's here with us, and um, you know, I just give a super brief intro, but. I, I would really love, because you have the most beautiful story. Oh, and actually before I even dive into that, I wanted to, I forgot to let everyone know, it, the first time I I was introduced to your beautiful energy was at a dinner hosted by Mind Body Green. And this was like, I think a couple years ago, um, it was before Expo West, they always have that dinner that they have, with, you know, just a a small dinner with some people in the community and I got a chance to hear you speak and it was beautiful and so inspiring um and I'm just kind of letting everyone else know that and then we kind of reconnected again at Revitalize so it's yeah. such a joy and such an honor to have you here now um yeah. sharing about sharing your story with my community but also sharing about your book so so please tell everyone tell everyone how all this started because oh. it was really <laughs> I know there's so, there's so many things. There's so many things to talk about. Um, one is of course lunch on me, which is like my child, my baby, my everything. Yes. yes. My nonprofit that really focuses on food access and not just mm -hmm. any food. I look for the good stuff. I look for vegan, organic, yeah. plant based foods. My focus is food is love, and it's yeah. a of that. And so I'm yeah. an advocate for so, uh, so many people, especially now during COVID, and that's something I want to share. That since COVID, before COVID. Um, hunger was 16% in mm -hmm. America. We've gone up to 25%. Oh, so, wow. So now we're having even bigger issues when it comes to food insecurities in homes. You know, it, it's reaching further than the homeless community and foster youth. And now everyone's been affected by it. So it's expanded our program. Um, also being green, what was really important to me was 40% of food in America never hits a kitchen table it literally goes in the trash. And so that's one of the things that we wanted to do. 70% of our food is repurposed yeah. organic vegan food. Yeah. And that we keep it going to landfills and getting into the hands of people. Mm -hmm. And that is our first, you know, we also do wellness modalities from yoga, breathwork, Reiki. We allow it to be accessible to mm -hmm. the community, mm -hmm. whether it's free. The, the most expensive class we have is $5. Yeah. So that, and then we have Lorea's Bodega, which is our, is our market initiative that focuses on having organic 99 cent stores. 70% of the food in our store is a dollar. Mm -hmm. And that's another way that we're approaching food hunger um, in an orthodox way. You know, yes. we're, we're trying to really focus people to people. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the programs. Um, a lot of people know my program starting from Lunch on Me, but Love Without Reason is really our bigger bridge. You mm -hmm. know, Lunch on Me is our food program. Love Without Reason mm -hmm. is how can we all show up and change this? How yes. can we turn things around? And, with the state of the world and where we are now, what better time, you know? No, truly. And, you know, the work that you've been doing is extraordinary. You know, <laughs> I mean, I have so much just love and admiration and respect for what you're doing. You've been, you've been a force, you know, in this mission and such a guiding light to so many people who have taken what you're doing. And not only are they participating with what you're doing, but they're creating, you know, the same type of thing in their own pockets, in their own communities. Yeah. So, you know, I just want to really take a moment to acknowledge you for that. Thank and you. just so grateful for what you're doing. 
Um, you know, I, I know a little bit about your, your background story, but I would love yeah. I would love everyone else to really know because you've been doing this and your heart has been in this yeah. at a young age, you know? Yes. Um, and I would love for you to share that if you could, just like how you were yeah. started, what happened, like, you know, to quit what you did. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, I started, first time I'd ever fed someone that was experiencing homelessness, I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was cleaning out food from my uncle's restaurant, you know, mm -hmm. going through stuff. And anyone that's been in the food industry, you kind of know that mm -hmm. so much food goes uneaten, so much is thrown away. Just the amount of waste, it's kind of hard to even think that there's hunger in America when you see the amount of abundance and things that are thrown away. And it was just one of those really divine moments that I feel like a lot of people um, it maybe would have noticed that as a divine moment. But for me in that moment, I was pulling all the perfectly good food to be thrown away. And there was a man outside digging in a trash can. And it was just this moment that I'm like, this food is good. I can't even take all of it home with me because I was taking that home with me as a kid. Yeah. And I just offered this man a plate. I asked him if he was hungry, and I just, I was 14. I don't think I had even thought about homelessness, what that looked like, the extent of that. And I had one of the most divine experiences, and I think that that, that had planted a seed in me. And yeah. I think that really what it was, it was I was meeting a need in that moment. I didn't redirect my day. I didn't change what I was doing, but I was aware enough to yeah. see that there was something in front of me that I could change. Yes. And I think in that moment, once it happened, I really, I love the experience and encounter I had with him. So I was like, you know what? I, I like doing this. And then, so yes. I noticed that every time I had seen someone, I think that it's an introduction. It's like, anytime you meet someone you've never met before from, from different side of the track, something different, everyone in that community starts to look different to you, right? You have the yes. first encounter. So I never had that fear or that reservation towards the homeless community that so many people have that I talked right. to. And right. in that moment, I just, every time I saw someone that was hungry or needed something, I was offering what I had. At the mm -hmm. time, it was my uncle's restaurant. Then he was like, you can't do this. This is a liability. You're not allowed to do this. And in the moment, I didn't really protest. I was like, oh, well, I'm gonna, I'm still gonna do it. So what happened was I grew up in the church. And I always tell people, anyone that's grown up in the church, they kind of are familiar with tithing, where 10% of whatever you have, you give mm -hmm. back to the church. You just give, you recognize that that's your way of doing your part and being good. And so I didn't really get out of church. I think what my grandmother got, who I was mm -hmm. really close to and I would go to church with. Yeah. And so what I, in the back of my head, it was always, I just feed people. Like, that's my thing. And so yeah. I had asked her, I was probably like 15, 2015, and I was like, Grandma, instead of tidying the church, can I feed people? And that's like yeah. the first time I had asked. And she was like, I don't, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you do your part. Yeah. So in that moment, I felt really empowered because at first I was like nervous, like only you could only do things in church. Because, you know, growing up in that environment, you don't really know that it expands past that space. Mm -hmm. And so I felt really empowered. And then yeah. every time I went out for the last for 10 years, no one knew I had fed the homeless community for 10 years until I was about 26 years old. Wow. I had never said anything because I just, I love to do it. And it was my quiet way to help. So yeah. I didn't really think it needed to be broadcast or even shared because mm -hmm. that's just what I did. And I didn't, it was very unorthodox too. So I didn't really see teenagers that were doing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I felt empowered by it, you know? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm in LA guys. So you might hear a whole bunch of sounds, <laughs> you know, it's a little loud. But um, so in those moments, I felt really empowered because mm -hmm. I was helping and 90% of my experiences were incredible, wonderful mm -hmm. people. I learned so many stories. I was just really connecting. And yeah. so when I came to LA, I was around 26 years old. And I was like, I want to do more than just tidying with what I have. There has to be more. I want to go to nonprofits and volunteer my time. Yeah. And so basically I went to nonprofits looking for ways to help. And when I got to the nonprofit world and exposed to that, I was really disheartened. Like I was, mm -hmm. I was crying. I was hurt because I just felt like, it was an infrastructure that was really in the way of connecting yeah. people. Yeah. So I had a radical moment. I was crying one day. I was like, long story that happened. But like in the moment, I had a moment where I was like, you know what? I don't know anything about the nonprofit world, but I know how to love people. And yeah. I knew that was my superpower. And I was like, yeah. I'm going to do it myself. And I don't know how, but I know how to love people for the last 10 years. I have connected with thousands of people. I had such wonderful encounters that I knew there was something to it, that I wanted to do it forever. And yeah. I knew that I wanted to do it my way. 
And I felt like the ways of traditional nonprofits, it didn't resonate with me. It didn't feel right. Like, I want to hug people. I want to connect with them. Yeah. Want, you know, have that exchange. And I just didn't see that there. And I, and I I'd kind of seen like the environment was supporting people becoming numb. Mm. Numb to insanity, numb to, you know, shut mm. down. I mean, how? And I was like, this isn't, this isn't for me. And so that's when I made a radical decision. And it was just one of those things I was like, it's going to be called Lunch with Me. I'm just going to buy lunch for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Literally how it started. It was like this idea wow. of I'm going to pick up the tab. Yeah. You know, any way I can, big and small. And I didn't really think about it. So we grew within a year and a half. We went from 500 mils a month to 10,000. And so I didn't expect, you know, I didn't even, I didn't even think about it. All I thought about is like, what am I going to do today? How am I going to show up? And Mm -hmm. so when it grew, I don't, I didn't have enough hands to hold everything. I was just like, this is insane. I think I was witnessing it like everyone else. Yeah. So those things where it just went, it just blossomed in this way. Mm -hmm. that I was like, okay, this is, this is, this is something that felt divine. And it felt like a calling and it felt like, it felt like the right thing to do. Yeah. And then I, and I realized it wasn't just the, the the street family, our homeless community, because I long understood their needs, which mm-hmm. obviously I understood those needs at 14. Mm-hmm. It was what I found from the wellness world, from mm-hmm. volunteers. I think what the real need I tapped into was humans wanting to do good and be good yes. and show up. But they didn't have the space for that. There yeah. weren't a lot of spaces that validated that, that doing good and set the tone of like, we can all come vulnerable, we can all be of service and it's empowering mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and so I think that's what I, I realized when it came to love without reason that there was a need of the people that came to volunteer the people that were you know in service in service jobs that didn't necessarily get out of it what they thought they would get when they started in those spaces mm-hmm. and so that's when I started to be way intentional in curating love and realizing like love isn't passive you yeah. know and it yeah. should be curated it should be a discipline it should be so intentional, not accidental. And that's what I learned with Love Without Reason. That's how it was birthed. Because yeah. I was curating experiences of love by showing up, serving, and being vulnerable. Mm-hmm. No, and- it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And I think, like, that is literally, like, like, energetically and, like, vibrationally, like, that's how we connect, you know, because that is, I love that. Love is, you know, the energy that draws what you're doing. You do need to just let it in. And living with that reason, but at the same time, you're like, it's intentional. So you are trying to serve. And it's, you know, everything that we do here is very much about that. So, I mean, it's so real. I'm so inspired. I've heard your story before, and I'm like, like, listening to it again, and I'm so inspired. You know, Thank you. And so, so that's how it kind of, you know, it just kind of turned into that thing. And then, yeah. you know, of course mind, body, brain being incredible. They were, you know, the first wellness community that embraced me and was like, you should share this. And, you know, they yes. definitely encouraged that um, space for me where they were like, you know, I don't think I, I didn't think I, I understood the, the the depth of the needs. Even now I'm unfolding like in, you know, pandemic and where we're at now and the things I'm learning that the need is even um, greater. Yeah. You know, I'm more, sure. you know, it's like, I'm discovering it like everyone else. I feel like a witness, you know, yeah. so it's, yeah. it's a very interesting space. And even the book, like I, I started writing this two years ago because oh, I wow. knew. Oh, wow, two years ago. Yes. I wrote this book, yeah, two years ago. I turned mm-hmm. this book in in 2019. Wow. So it's very interesting how, yeah, I know I have mine right here too. I'm like, yeah. So, mm-hmm. it, and that's the, interesting, the, that's the interesting part about it was even then, I was starting to recognize us going uh, off. We were derailing. Mm-hmm. And I started writing because I was like, daily I'm experiencing love. Daily my cup runneth over. Yeah. And this is that for myself. And I and I realized I'd walked in my encounters. So many people were searching or yeah. something was missing for the things that I felt like I had on a daily basis. Yeah. And so that's why I started writing because I started thinking about like how I got here. I'm mm-hmm. so cool. You know, like I said, I don't have hands to hold everything, and it's still yeah. coming. And yes. so I wanted to, to to create a book that was really focused on heart work. You know, I was mm-hmm. like, a lot of this has to do with, like, healing and showing up as the best version of yourself mm-hmm. and everyone benefiting from that. Mm-hmm. You know, when you get out of your own way, and I learned that, too, when I was okay with being vulnerable, not knowing what I was doing, but knowing 
there was there was love inside that needed to go somewhere. Yeah. There a lot of beautiful things came from that and I really wanted people to know like there are movements to get into that space. Mm-hmm. And it's attainable for everyone. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's and what I want to do. Beautiful. To, you know? So so like let's like let's watch people and by the way, you guys, this is the book. It's so pretty. So mm-hmm. I, it's like so me to have like the air you see all the rainbows in this? You guys know what rainbows <laughs> mean. It's almost like a crystal on the book because of all the crystals. Yes. <laughs> um, so so this book, you know, and everyone go to if you look at the very bottom where I always pin, like you'll see Larea's account. So go follow her and then they'll be able to get all the information, right? Like where yes. you can find the it's book. It's Amazon, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's everywhere, so, Amazon, Target, oh. wherever they want it. Okay, amazing. So Amazon, Target, like everywhere oh, online. Cool. Online, do you have yeah. an audio version too? Or that'll that's coming? Yes. Okay. Yes. Amazing. Yeah, and, I okay. The, and I recorded the audio. So, oh, yes. amazing. Okay, so you guys, so that's what this is. And then, like, walk us through, you know, I know that this is like a blueprint. And by the way, she dated this book to her grandma. And that's just like, my grandma is, <laughs> my grandma is in, uh, one of my angels now, but like, grandmas right. are so special. They teach oh us God. so much, you know, yes. and, and and we we don't even realize it all sometimes until much later how much they taught us, right? A hundred percent. There is, there, yeah, there's such a divine quality. Yeah. They are. And um, yes, I felt that way. My grandmother definitely, everything that I've done in this birth out of the example and love that she shared with me, that's oh, wow. definitely where it came from. Everything. Mm-hmm. I would not be, I wouldn't have even been bold enough to walk in my truth had mm-hmm. I not had someone that loved me enough to liberate me, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, yes, I feel that very special divine connection to my grandmother. Yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. I feel that with you. And like, they're just so special. So, okay, so back to the book, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm going to talk about my grandma. Or you, you can talk about yours. You can talk about grandma's for like 20 minutes or two hours yeah. or like 20 <laughs> days, you know? Um, with the book being a blueprint, blueprint, like, can you walk us through it a little bit so that people know like, yeah. what's inside, like cover to cover, what they're going to get with this? Yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, my approach to love has been mm-hmm. love is a discipline and a steepy. So mm-hmm. I do believe that in order to master it, you have to practice it like anything else. Yeah. Anything you want to master. And I think that a lot of time our approach to love is it's accidental. You know, we accept whatever love comes our way and then we allow that to define our love and influence us and our experiences. But I think that it's not that passive way. I think it's, what do I want love to be? Let me show up as that. Let me attract that by being that. Mm -hmm. And I think that the book, it's focused on multiple things. One is heart work exercises. I Mm -hmm. say that the heart is a muscle. Mm -hmm. So in order, you know, you have to put it to good use, Mm -hmm. you know, for it to build its capacity, just like working out. And so there's exercise in, in it to create an open dialogue with our hearts. I don't think we check in with ourselves enough. And no, I agree. And it's, so it's really about creating that relationship, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I learned that was so important is when I talk to many people about love, they always talk about it as though their hearts are fragile. Mm-hmm. And I think that that psychologically has a lot to do with how we're showing up in life. We think that it's fragile opposed to resilient. Yeah. So it's really focused on that reframing mentally, yes. looking at the parts differently and having a deep connection with them and building their capacity. This is a hard work book, you know, this is really oh, about gosh. that. And it's it's tangible and realistic. You know, I don't write about fluff, nothing about my life is fluff. So mm-hmm. it's really about tangible, realistic things that you can do daily. And it's not about changing, it's not about changing the course of your day. It's about implementing different things within different moments of your day. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the difference too, is I don't look at days as days i look at as minutes and hours and encounters yeah and being so mindful and intentional in spaces where you can really think about is this a moment that i could have added more love is there mm-hmm. someone i could have taken 10 minutes because that's what i do like i literally will take 30 minutes of my day and say okay this is dedicated to checking in with this this person this person this person i need to be very intentional with my time and how i'm showing up for people i love yeah you know? I can't just stay out with this person, you know? That's mm-hmm. not enough. I tell people, I like, we can't decide that we're good-natured in our mind, but not show up as that. And that's what I see a lot, where people want to be good and do good, but they never get to the part of doing. 
Mm-hmm. And I wrote about how you do it, how you show up on a daily basis. Yeah. Not just for the world, but for yourself, because as you grow and develop, everyone benefits from this growth. You know, when we feel everyone benefits from the love that's birthed from that space. And that's, I feel like, you know, Again, we were saying like it's so timely. I more now than ever. I mean, this yeah. this book serves your heart, it serves your soul, it serves your community and the people around you, and it's so needed because you know, I think with the pandemic and with twenty twenty, even if you were kind of doing that work, people have just been so thrown off. Like they're forced to mm-hmm. off and you know, just having this as again, I talk a lot about tools, you know, because we are so empowered and we are powerful beings but sometimes we just need tools to help guide us back you know guide us back to our path right and our lane and so i love that you're just teaching people these are the things that you can do to exercise you know that hard work to to kind of check in with yourself again so so i and i don't want to give words in the book but are there like one or two things that like you can you can share right now that gives you some insight, right, to yeah. the rest of what's in the book, and that they can walk away from today and actually do. A hundred percent. So one of the things, and it's also um, a question that can be incorporated. Uh, my book launch is Saturday, so we'll we're going to be taking questions and stuff live. Yay! And Saturdays. one of the exercises that is so important to me because I think that this kind of sets the tone of what we're doing when it comes to this work is. First of all, I'm a sticky note person. I have to write everything down. I have to like, and I put the I love that. Down. I get that. One of those, like, I need to, uh-huh. I, if I can see it, I can believe it, you know? So yeah. I have to speak. If I want to change, I have to write how I'm going to change. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm just one of those people that, that have to organize my mind in that way. But what I ask people often um, when starting into this work as a hard work exercise, you, I want everyone to think about what has love been to them? Like what in you, every, everyone has a very unique experience, right? To yes. everyone's own individual walk. What has love been to you? Mm-hmm. Write that out as your, 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 your experience and then write the definition of what you want love to be. Mm-hmm. Nine times out of 10, they're never the same. Wow. You know? wow. And so, so what's important is, yeah, what's so important about that is when you can write out what you want love to be, you have a destination. Yeah, because a lot of times we allow love to direct our course, our experience, and what happens. Yeah. Nine out of ten, we're undoing the heartbreak, the disappointment. But we never talk about the fact that wait, if I want love to be this, I have to be this. Yes. Not hundred percent. Yes, you know. Oh, and yes. so everything to me is like roadmaps and blueprints of things, mm-hmm. and. That to me changed everything for me when I started to realize because I didn't learn love in the most healthy environments and spaces. I learned mm-hmm. I learned about love from knowing what it wasn't. And yeah. what I had to also understand was I didn't want more of that. I wanted to define love off of what I wanted it to be, and then it became that. Yeah, you know, so and that's cool. very important. And I, I think that's something that's tangible that most people can do. And it's it's realistic thinking about what love what your experience is, then you get, you get to decide, but is that love? Because a lot of times we, de- we define our experience off of what it's been, but then we also have this other idea of what love is or what yeah. it should be. Totally. We should be leaning towards what it should be or what it, we want it to be, mm-hmm. you know? And I think yeah. that takes our power back where we're not sitting and thinking, oh, we're, we're only the love or the product of our experience. And no, I'm curating that love. Mm-hmm. I want that in my life, my family, my environment, my community. I'm showing up as that first. And that gives us permission to all be that, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. not waiting, hoping that people will be those things. Yes. Yes. So powerful. You guys, I hope you're taking notes because, you know, <laughs> this is, and I, even though the replays are going to go back up, but it's so powerful. And I mean, so simple, really. Like it's just, it's just like a reframe of your mind and it's just reminding you of what's really inside and it's reminding you of what you deserve and what you can have. You know, and then you, you get to create that. Like, you just have to yes. be inspired by it. That's yes. beautiful. And, and I think what helps with that, too, is we have to remember that the world doesn't always support our empowerment and caring. So it's our responsibility to go in. That's why they always say it always starts internally. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to define that for yourself. 
-hmm. You have to decide, do you want the world to assign who you are and how you show up and navigate in it? Or yes. do you want to be that empowered person? Yes, yes. You, you know, and it's really asking yourself those questions and yeah. answering them. And that's what makes it realistic and tangible. Mm -hmm. Like you decide that for yourself. We, yes. we are so much more power than we give ourselves credit for. Yes, 100%. And such a good reminder. I mean, you guys, I love you guys. Thank you for all your hearts. Everyone is in agreement about that. Like, people are feeling you and hearing yeah. this. And, you know, it's it's the reminders. It's the kind of, it's the kind of like, insight and information that needs to continue to mm -hmm. put out there. You know? Like, so, so, you know, you creating this is such a gift to us to us, to all of us, to the world. You know, I encourage you guys. I know that there's already a few of you that said, can't wait to get this book, that you need this book. This book comes out on Saturday. And so that's... Oh, it comes Saturday. out tomorrow. Can you oh, believe tomorrow. it? Oh, yeah, my launch, Saturday. Saturday. Tomorrow. Yeah, no, my launch is on Saturday. I'm actually throwing my party on Saturday. Uh -huh. But the launch, yeah, the book actually comes out tomorrow. Oh, my God. Which is okay. so crazy. This is amazing. See, so it comes out tomorrow, okay? And you want to <laughs> yes. get the book. Let's see, tomorrow is Tuesday. So if you order today, you can probably get the book via Amazon. Yeah, we have it Amazon. Book launch party. <laughs> On yes, Saturday. Saturday. So, tell us and if you're in LA, of course you can come to the lunch party. Ah, uh, okay. So, and you're are you going to stream it? Are people going to be able to like? Yeah, yeah, we'll in? have to stream as well for people who can attend who aren't here. But yes, um, we will. It's okay. been a two year celebration, so I'm ready to celebrate. I'm ready to uh, get I love it, it. You know? Okay, so yeah, tell, so someone just said, "Can we join the party?" So, so if they want to stream into your launch party. And yes. just up and elevate that energy with their I love. Know. How are they going to do that on Saturday? So, How can they we'll, find so we'll, we'll be on IG Live and we'll also be on Clubhouse. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. I so love it. Stuff. Okay, so since you said that, where can we find you on Clubhouse? Is it the same handle that's down below? Yeah, it's Lorea. Yeah, it's, it's just Lorea. And it'll be like my first Clubhouse because I haven't done it yet. This is oh, we should first. do one together, babe. Yes, let's, let's do it. Okay, because I'm going to start doing them, like, I'll probably start doing them after my IG live, so I'll probably start doing uh -huh. them around 2 p.m., um, oh and I do, like, this Honor and Alchemy one at night, so you're always welcome to join on, and you can share about love in your book, because it's what we talk about, too, like, yeah. at night, so, so that's tonight, actually, at 6 p.m. on Monday, so you're welcome to jump on, and okay, I'll share on. with the community that you have your book launching tomorrow, um, yes. and just talk about because I'm always talking about, like, love is that secret ingredient, not just to your food, but to life, right? Yeah. So, it is the most talked about. It's like one of those things that's like, there's it's, there's nothing outside of love. Like, mm -hmm. it is the most talked about subject. Like, yeah. you know, 2021, we're still talking about it. Like, I wrote a yes. book about it. It's, not, it's the theme, and it's like, there's nothing outside. It should be nothing outside of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it everything is. returns to love. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Everything and everything comes from that. And everything, yes. everything enhances from that. Like everything is from that. And I, and it's so, it's such an important, it's so important to give people those reminders, you know. Yes. And especially doing it in this super beautiful book with like, and it's um, okay, thank you. I know. Yeah, I'm like, see, I'm like, my book is, um, I'm no older than eight because I've liked holographic probably my whole life. You know, uh, everything glitter, everything. Um, no one's I mean, anything. I mean, I'm all. I mean, look at this. I've got like I know, you know, all the and glitter. Yeah, I've got my spray. I'm gonna have to give you some of this spray. Okay, this is a brand new one. Yes, yes. but we'll spray this one. I think this is not a <laughs> one. So, okay, there you go. So I'm just gonna do some of this. We're gonna get. We got the book. Gizmo is Gizmo is giving his blessing to the book. I know, I know. I saw it earlier. I was like, that's so cute. Gizmo, you need to do a photo shoot with the book. Oh, we totally will. We'll do, we'll do it. We'll do a little photo shoot and we'll send it to you. So, yes. so amazing. I'm so excited for you. And, you know, I, I, I want you to just like, you know, before we, and we still have time, obviously, but, yeah. but I want to know how we as a community can support even more, you know, launch on me and the bodega. Like you guys, if you go to her Instagram account, the handles are there and you'll find out, but just right now, you know, like, yeah. that's what can we do more? I, there, there's so many things when it comes to, to lunch on me. I always tell people it's time, money, talent, or food. Yeah. Any of those things, you mm -hmm. know, it, it requires all of them at different times where yeah. if you don't have time and you can give money, give money. 
If yes. you don't have money and you can give time, like whatever you're able to do, if you have a talent and gift and yeah. you want to give back, that's another way that you can contribute. I, I think the most important part is that we have to recognize if we're good people, we want things to be different, we have to show up. Yes. All of us, you know? Yes. Show up for our community, advocate. And one of the things that we do at Lunch on Me, we, all we ask is like someone dedicate one moment out of their month. You know, that's 12 a year. We just ask, if yes. it's, and, it, and it can be 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. All we ask mm -hmm. is if, if, if everyone was doing that, if yes. everyone, think about just think about Los Angeles, and if everyone dedicated an hour yeah. to this work, yeah. how many things would eliminate themselves? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so and I you guys, what's an hour? Work. What's an Literally, hour? Literally, we have people that come in for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. They'll come in and volunteer, and they're like, I only have 45 minutes. And we're like, okay, perfect. You can organize a kombucha. Yeah. And, like, you know, whatever it is, but it's yes. like, we all have to do our part, and we have to make it. Like, no one needs to redirect their life, but you should implement showing up. Yes. It doesn't yes. have to be much. Again, 12 days out of the year. 12 days. 12 mm -hmm. moments, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that we ask. And if you want to pledge, our pledges start as low as $10 a month. So yeah. it's like everyone can pledge monthly. It's just, you know, we don't need one person to solve the problem. We need all of us to come together. No, to together. Together we rise, you guys. That's what I'm exactly. always talking about. Let's rise together, and together we rise. Like I'm constantly saying that, and this is how you do it: you show up for yourself and show up for each other. So and ask me, okay, you know, talk about the things that matter. Yes, like you, you're using your platform. Like mm -hmm. these are the things that help because mm -hmm. advocating. You know, mm -hmm. this work came from us advocating for people who did not have. You know, yeah. we're now we're distributing ten thousand free meals a month. Amazing. You know, I. You know, I, I there was a time where I couldn't feed myself. So yes. to be at this space, I, I say that it really comes from standing up for what matters, yes. being a voice. You know, yes. that empowerment is important. You know, yes. even we, especially if you are in the house community, we can't take that for granted because there's a privilege that comes with having mm -hmm. psychosocial needs, food, shelter, mm -hmm. water. Yeah, it's of course. Difficult, you know, of and course. it's like important that we know that like. We're so privileged to have those things. Mm -hmm. Even if it's even if we're all wishing and wanting more, mm -hmm. what we have is a gift, and there's someone praying for the position we're in right now. A hundred percent. not take it lightly, you know. Mm -hmm. So and beautiful. Definitely, so like, I feel like beautiful. So no, and 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 I just and I'm I'm so I'm really like the more we talk about the more uh, more excited I'm getting. It's just yeah. about how and and it's also that connection, you guys. Like when you do that. You create these energetic connections and these bonds with other people and other souls, and it's just like you're—it's just like creating that frequency around you. It only—it only makes everything that you do better. It only makes everything that you touch better. And like, oh, I love you, Emma. I love you. Um, and also, I just want to acknowledge that some people already said I just bought the book, so thank you, thank you for getting the book. Um, and and um, you know, what what Maria was saying just about using your voice and like using the opportunities that you have to like send out more love and information so you guys if you can screenshot we do giveaways sometimes when we do these yeah. guys like if you want to give away a book we could do that i can mm -hmm. give away yeah, of like, right but you guys so important it's like screenshot this and share with your community what, what larry is doing share about lunch on me share about the bodega share about the fact that it's only you know 12 hours in a whole year or that they can contribute yeah. just like by sharing about this new this new magical prison book and this tool as to how you can reconnect to yourself. So I would love for you guys to do that. Screenshot, tag us, yes. post it, you know, post it, yes. and like you know, share with your community about another amazing way that they can contribute and they can elevate this 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 energy of love. Because ten dollars, right? That's where it starts. Tell us what ten dollars can do for someone. Like, so we're now at 89 cents a meal with all eco-friendly compartments, 89 cents. So $10 feeds yeah. 10 people. Ten. For the and then so, some, you know, yes. uh, you know, exactly. so it's and, $10, and you guys. And it's, it's such a small amount for what we're able to do because mm -hmm. we're, we're taught, especially now we're at 25% of America, that's one in four people in America are going home from an empty fridge. It's beyond homelessness. Mm -hmm. Like hunger is 
hitting so many people just having access yes. and being able to, yes. to help in this way where even at our bodega, six days a week, Sunday's the only day we're closed because we don't skid. We just do a lot of stuff on Sundays to yes. really, since, especially since COVID. Mm -hmm. But Monday through Saturday, anyone that needs a free meal can come to the bodega. So it's not just that we're feeding. The thing is, mm -hmm. I have a storefront that yeah. allows people to come. If you're hungry, we don't turn anyone away. Yeah. And that's very, very big for this time in America yes. and the community because you don't find that. You no. know, you know, scarcity, mental scarcity is what drives the majority of the world where where we don't feel that we can share because we'll never have enough. Yeah. And this is coming from a place of abundance. Mentally, yes. it's another reframing that that I will never go without by giving. Universally, yes. I don't think that yes. I don't need to think that the higher power even works. Anymore. Yes, a hundred percent. You know? there's more than enough for all of us, and the more you give, the more you receive. You know, because yeah, and sharing, sharing is like that. sharing is not giving someone less than that was a big thing that I I had been advocating for in this work because a lot of times I work with nonprofits. They would mm -hmm. have so much money and then they would give away expired canned food and things. Ah. And I'm just like, you know, and it's just like, you know, it's difficult, but that's, I mean, most people know that canned food drives are, I mean, that's what they associate yeah. with. And yeah. just to me, sharing and giving is giving someone something you want to receive. Yeah. The food that I 100%. use is because that's what I eat. I'm not yes. giving them less than me. I don't, yes. it's, circumstance has nothing to do with what someone deserves. I think it's yes. our, our, our responsibility if we're good people then we share, yes. you know, if we want to be good people, if we want to navigate from that space, it comes with action. It's not an idea. Yes. You yes. Know? A hundred percent. So beautiful. You, I mean, truly like such an angel, you know, you're just an angel. <laughs> There's like cuss awesome. words in my book. I don't know if I'm an angel. <laughs> oh, hey, that's just a word. That's just four letters on the cover. You are an angel. And, you know, there are people that have already messaged your comments and they want to know, how they can come one day. And so the data is in downtown, right? And yeah. so, and and anyone can visit, right? So oh, yeah. We're open visit. right now. Anyone mm -hmm. can volunteer, right? Just to yeah. give them time. They can DM us. Like, it's, you know, it's so casual. Like I said, we are very unorthodox when it uh -huh. comes to it. It's really person to person. Everyone knows that if you're contacting us, 90% of the time, you're going to talk to Venus. Venus has 20 jobs. <laughs> and she's the one that coordinates everyone. She does, oh. she does so much stuff that everyone oh, knows wow. that if you're contacting us, I don't know how she does it. We have like 2000, probably 2,000 volunteers in LA, and she knows everyone's name and birthdays. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, I'm she's so a superhuman. So shout I'm out to awesome. Venus. I'm pretty sure she's on the live too. Yes, thank you, Venus. Thank Venus. you. I love, I love everyone giving hearts to Venus. Oh, like, someone said, oh yeah. Tanya yes. said Venus is an angel. Yes, <laughs> Tanya, she's a badass. It's amazing. <laughs> it's All the hearts to Venus. Guys. Thank you, Venus. So, okay, so you guys, so again, I want you to screenshot this. And you know what? If you have a private account, that's okay. You don't have to make it public. Yeah. Just DM it to me, but like, you're sharing what you're sharing with your community. And mm -hmm. no matter what the size of the community is, it counts and it matters. And share this message of love, you know, talk about mm -hmm. what you're me. you know, talk about the bodega, talk about this book that is most laying against us. Oh, there's business. Venus, I Venus think. Nari. Shout out to Venus Nari in the comments because that's her. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh, there you go. Venus Nari. She Thank would be streaming so lives, running the bodega at the same time. And oh. mind you, it has this coffee sent to me while I was here. So oh I'm my like God. super what? human. I have not moved. The coffee got here. She's still down there. She has like 20 arms. I don't know how she does it. So oh shout out goodness. to like my rock. She's been a rock. So thank wow. you for that. Well, and Venus, then even, we're even, so even, grateful. So grateful for Venus. I always have to mention her because I'm like, she does so much. It's crazy. But but even with the book, like I said, it's it's important that we all show up. You know, mm -hmm. there's so much that's, that we haven't even faced what the experience of the pandemic has done to us. Oh, mind, no. body, soul. It's you know, like so it's like barely the tip of the iceberg right now. Like we're still experiencing it, so we haven't even had a chance to make it hindsight, right? Oh yeah. So one thing I, I just want to remind people is don't wait to do the work when things go crumbling down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Make mm -hmm. sure that we're showing up. Mm -hmm. And she said she has her customers listening. Make sure we're showing up and doing the work daily. 
I, I can't, I can't stress this enough. I would tell anyone to get to a place of peace and showing up and their mm -hmm. authentic self. It starts with spiritual, spiritual practices that happen every day. Uh, I every day that. with discipline, you know? Mm -hmm. And I say that because to navigate in this world, again, it, it's a constant protest for self-love mm -hmm. because the way the world is set up does not validate us to shine and elevate. And yeah. it's important that we take that authority mm -hmm. by being those beings, by doing the work for us. Like we owe it to ourselves. Yeah. No, we we do. owe it to ourselves. You know, we don't have to carry the weight of the world and what's going on. Mm -hmm. Things can be different, but we have to make that decision. Mm -hmm. And it comes from an empowered place when you make that decision. And don't put it off till Monday. I always tell people, because they're like, I'm going to start. I'm like, no. Start now. now. Like, no better right now. today. This is when you change things. Right now. And that's why I that's why I asked you, I was like, what's one thing? And she gave it to you guys. You know, like, yeah. check in, like, what is love? You know, really? Like, what, what do you want it to be for what you? What do you want it to life? be? You know, it's like, and, I, and I'll give an example of one of the things that I had to do as an example. Because sometimes people are like, I don't know where to think or where to put, put place this exercise. One of the things I did, um, give it another exercise way, but one of the things I do is, when I want to accomplish something, mm -hmm. when I want to change, because mm -hmm. all of us want to change, but we don't think about like what it takes. The right. thing I think about is I always write what I want to change. Mm -hmm. And the second part of that, there's always two parts. I write what I'm willing to give up to be that change. Oh. It's very important to look at the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. If I want to let go of my ego, I have mm -hmm. to be quiet sometimes. Oh, I yeah. have to not. Mm -hmm. Be, I have to call first. Mm -hmm. I have to apologize, mm -hmm. for, even if it's to be misunderstood. It's like, these are things that we have to think about. We can't just say we want this. We have to have blueprints. Mm -hmm. Working tangible blueprints, that's how change happens. It does not happen by think, you don't think it into existence. Change is actionable. Like, you have to show up and do those things. And yep. one of the things I learned, I'm right now, I'm learning patience, guys. I'm really working on it. I'm working on it. I've been working on it half my life. But the thing I'm learning <laughs> is when the challenges come, when it comes to being patient, what mm -hmm. I've had to learn is you have to check yourself. Don't wait until the universe does it because that's when you hit the ground. Mm -hmm. But just get to a space where when I want to be patient, I have to tell myself in real time when I'm being impatient, this is the moment to expand. Mm -hmm. This is the moment to take a second mm -hmm. and say, you know what? Like I want things to be different mm -hmm. and it will only happen if I become different. Mm -hmm. And that only happens if I hold myself accountable to come mm -hmm. up with blueprints. Mm -hmm. That's very important to do for yourself. That's yeah. why self-help books are important because we all need to do work. No one's perfect. All of us, but we all should be creating goals, how mm -hmm. we want to be different. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about external goals. You know, we have all these things we want to do career life. But I'm talking about being better to show up for your family, for your mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. When you do this work, Everything changes. My daily interactions change, you know? When Everything I start does. bringing more love, even into work, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I've talked about that people get like really crazy. I'm like, yep, I'm the mm -hmm. same way in mm -hmm. work. Everyone, mm -hmm. all of everyone that we have in our team, I hug them, I love them, mm -hmm. I cook for like, And I say that because we have to show up differently in those things will change. Yep, yep. And it's, yeah. and again, it's exactly what you said. It's just about, it's about being intentional, you know, it's about being intentional and, and owning, you know, owning who you are, owning that power, yeah. owning your actions, owning your thoughts, you know, Absolutely. And, really, really, and taking that power back, right? Because yeah. if you're not doing that, you're giving your power away to someone else to decide what you get to have. Mm -hmm. But you take that power back, you know, and, and really owning that. And so I think that it's such a great example that you brought about patience but it shows up in every single way we've got some comments that have come up about yeah. some of the challenges but every one of those challenges is just an opportunity for you to be like okay so what can i learn about myself right now in this moment yeah. you know and what can i do to like put some intentionality towards what i want you know yeah so it's it's and I mean, your community you know the biggest thing is like i i think it's again i will tell you one of the roots of this is it's acts of vulnerability yeah. All that we're talking about this work. So a lot of us have problems with vulnerability because I get it. Life is organized in a different mm -hmm. way. But mm -hmm. I will tell you, in order to do this work, you have to open up. Yeah. You have to get to a space because yeah. even the vulnerability, no attachment. Like I the one thing that I say, 
you know, with our team and with my, my family and friends, mm-hmm. I'm like, what can I do to be better? Mm-hmm. Are there things I've done that I can like to rewrite that, you know, mm-hmm. showing up, don't be afraid to ask for help and correction. Yeah, you know, don't be afraid. Because Every day, I'm not to love. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, I'm telling you, in that space, when someone's ready for that vulnerability and you have that exchange with other people, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, nine times out of ten, people will love, honor, respect you from coming yeah. from a vulnerable place. There were times where I was guarded, and when people are vulnerable with me, it cracked me open. Yeah. If we can yes. be that for other people, you know? Yes. And that's very important that. to yeah. know that this work is a vulnerability work and it's going mm-hmm. to stretch and strengthen your capacity. So be ready for that. But also be ready for the challenge because you will be so different that you won't recognize you in the mm-hmm. best way. Mm-hmm. Because you will have all the ways that don't serve you. Yes, 100%. Oh, let's all <laughs> 100%. You guys love, uh, and thank you. I can see all of these comments. I know, all these parts. You can see all of it. We are all on the same page here. And, okay, Gabe, I'm going to have to take the book, okay? He's, like, laying up against it. Okay, so one more time before we wrap up, you guys, this is this is the book. It comes out tomorrow. Go to Amazon. A bunch of you guys already did it. Go to Amazon. Order this book so that you have it in time for the launch party on Saturday. Yes. It's going to be streaming live. Yes. on for Instagram Live and on Clubhouse. And yes, yes. it was so much fun today. I'm so Thank happy you. To you. I on. appreciate you. You're so wonderful. I can't wait to see you. Give uh, you a hug. Yes. I know. It's been just a, such a time. Yes. So it's, I'm excited yes. when we get back to those We're going to hug. We're going to come down to the bodega. I'm going to bring Gizmo. Oh, my God. Please do. We always we'll have kids for dogs. Always. Yes. <laughs> when I think the neighborhood, it's a social place. Like, it's a, all the animals come in, like, all the time. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. So we're going to come, guys. We're going to go down to the bodega. And everyone who's asking, you want that book? How much is the book? Where is the book? Go to the race. It's $24.99. Mm-hmm. It's 24, hard copy, $24.99. Hard cover, $24.99. And it's on Amazon if you want to get it, you know, tomorrow, because you know how Amazon works. Um, or if anyone's in LA on Saturday, you can get the book at our event as well. Amazing. The name Love of the book is reason. right here. It's love. Love Without Reason, Blossom and Living in F. So before we wrap up, you guys, go to the bottom here, go to the pinned comment, go follow Lorea, go and find all the magic she's creating, get the book, and then hopefully we'll all see each other again, like on Saturday on yes. your IG Live. Yes. You can jump in and celebrate, celebrate yes. during your lunch party. So yay! You know I will. You know. Okay, I will. you guys. You're Thank amazing. you guys. Thank you so you're much. Don't forget to send us screenshots, you guys. You're amazing. Yes. Thank and thank you. you, Gizmo, for being a part of this book. <laughs> <laughs> yay! Okay, I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you soon. Okay, bye. bye. Guys.